from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Wednesday, October the 20th, 2021. Hopefully, you're having a great week so far. Hump Day, Wednesday. Uh, just a few more days to go until the weekend, which means just a few more days until the Thai Cats return to the field and host the Ottawa Red Blacks right here at Tim Hortons Field. There are still some tickets available, so if you go to TieCats.ca, you can pick them up. And if you're coming down to the game, or even if you're not, make sure to tune in at 3 o'clock when Andy Fantuz and I bring you Tiger Cats pregame presented by Active Green and Ross. And then we'll hand it over to RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker, who have the call starting at 4 p.m. As mentioned, this is Tie Cats today, so lots to get to on today's show. We're going to run down the injury report in just a second. We're going to hear from Coach Orlando Steinauer, as we do every day. And we'll hear from Jalen Acklin as well, as he spoke after practice today. And later we'll be joined by... CHCH's Bubba O'Neill. He also hosts the CFL This Week right here on the Thai Cats Audio Network. A brand new episode of that launched on Monday. So if you haven't already, go check it out. Lots of great discussions alongside Matthew Shinetti, Dan Ralph, and AJ Jakobic. Speaking of AJ, he is my guest on a brand new Speaking with the Enemy that will be dropping later this week. So lots going on. It's a game week. Getting set for Saturday's game here on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Network. All right, let's take a look at the Ticats injury report. Is This is the injury report released yesterday at 5 p.m. And uh, I'll, I'll let you know some of the updates that Coach told us about at uh, you know after practice today. But uh, Brandon Banks was a full participant. Nick Cross was limited, uh, which is pretty encouraging. Uh, he was on the six-game injured list. A uh, huge, huge factor on special teams, Canadian. Uh, they really liked what he's been doing in his rookie season. So the fact that he's limited practice, good news. Uh, Mike Daly, Felix Garan, Gauthier, and Marcus Green all did not practice. Wes Hills was back as a full participant as well. He was on the six-game intro list, or still is on the six-game intro list. Don Jackson was a full participant. Teddy Laurent was limited. Lorenzo Malden the fourth, also full participant at practice. Jordan Murray, offensive lineman, was limited. Frankie Williams did not practice. And linebacker Kyle Wilson uh, was limited as well. So that's the injury report as of today. Uh, We'll get the one for tomorrow coming up later on in a bit. So some encouraging news. Uh, we, We can tell you, Coach told us, that it does look like Brandon Banks will likely start on Saturday. So that's good news uh, for Ticats fans and for the reigning MOP to get back out there. Uh, And uh, good discussion with, uh, with Bubba and I coming up in just a little bit. On on that, I will let you know Bubba was here at practice, so we did talk during practice. We're not talking live here on the podcast, but uh, we caught up with him at practice and uh, lots of good stuff on that coming up in just a little bit. But first, let's start with the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. That is Orlando Steinauer. And I will let you know that the last two days, I have felt the energy, I felt the intensity from where I've been sitting in Section 105. Uh, and I, I, I asked Coach O off the top here uh, about how... You translate the energy, the intensity, and everything you bring to practice onto game day. And here's what he had to say. Well, that's just it, Lou. You gotta, you gotta do it. You know, in the game. I don't. I don't. Uh, there's been very few games where I've uh, questioned our effort. Uh, where we need to improve is is our execution and and make more timely plays consistently. And we we've done that at times. And we just need to build off of those things and understand uh, how much more important it is as we go down the stretch. Anybody I believe can beat anybody, right? That's that's just the way it is. You have to go out and earn your victories every week. Every week somebody's putting together a game plan uh, to beat you. And if you don't do things that are advantageous to winning, if you turn the ball over, if you're doing crazy things, then you're gonna lessen your chance of winning. So uh, we definitely respect our opponent, but we're not gonna focus too much on them because it'll take away from, you know, our expectations and execution. So um, we're aware that that anybody can be beat um, at any time. But, you know, again, our focus will remain on ourselves. Yeah, so Jalen is, uh, you know, a guy that I know that I've mentioned this before, but he's a guy that was at an open tryout in Buffalo and he just kept catching the football. And uh, he was somebody that we definitely – had our eye on and and he's a guy that earned a way to training camp. So he's, he's kind of done it the hard way. I know he had, you know, quick stops in the NFL and, and we already knew the, the intangible things, 
or the tangible things, excuse me, about him as far as that he could run and he can jump. But you got to translate that into being a being a football player. And so, you know, in his first year, I think he's figuring out the CFL. I think we were trying to figure out, is he is he better with the waggle? Is he better without? And come to find out he, he could do both. Yeah. And I just think after you've been in the league for a year or even a, a certain amount of time in your first year, uh, you, you train a little different. You have a better understanding. Uh, you understand defenses a little bit better. And I think that he's a lot tougher than than people may give him credit credit for he's he's a tough guy he competes uh he he loves competition so you know I just think with him you know he was probably leading our team at the at the x position early on uh we've moved him inside uh he hasn't he hasn't really missed a beat and and I do think he's an ultimate team guy right uh when when we he stopped seeing the amount of footballs that he saw early in the year he just came to work. I just think he comes to work every day. So I really, as you can tell, I don't really don't have enough great things to say about him. And I think he'd be the first one to tell you that he's just scratching the surface, that he wants to get a lot better. That is the head coach of the Hamilton Targets, Orlando Steiner, as he spoke after practice, talking a little bit about their, you know, bringing the intensity from practice to the game. He talked about uh, Jalen Acklin. And he talked about not taking uh, the opponent Easily, even though the Ottawa Red Blacks coming to this one two and eight on the season so far. You mentioned great answer there on Jalen Acklin at the end, and uh, you know we've talked about it on this show that Acklin has at times found himself as the most experienced receiver out there. But he's going to have Brandon Banks back. He's going to have Braylon Addison back alongside him as well. But uh, we did catch up with Braylon or Jalen, excuse me. We caught up with Jalen, Braylon, you know, one of them. Uh, we caught up with Jalen Acklin after practice today. And first, I just wanted to know how he uh, spent his bye week. I did. I stayed here, and then I, like, threw with Dane and Jeremiah and Watt. But, like, my body was pretty good, so there wasn't really a reason to take time off. But, I mean, I still – I wasn't in here, like, 12 hours. I was in here for, like, two. And then I went back and played video games or watched film uh, or watched the, the other CFL games. So, so, yeah, it was nice to have a little bit of time off. Yeah, they, they have been a little bit different. I mean – but uh, the number one thing would probably be like uh, our offense is changing because we've had, you know, three different quarterbacks. And I think the most we've had a quarterback is like two or three games in a row. So it's just kind of kind of adjusting to that. But I mean, not much different. Still the same core guys. Uh, you know, but we're just we're just not executing as much as we'd like to. But uh, but we're, we're getting better every week. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think most of it's like. We, we were going through that QB competition in fall camp, and now he's just, he's just now getting to where he's getting more comfortable and kind of believing. And, you know, Steve Dunbar has really stepped up for us. He didn't get to play a lot of camp so because uh, he, he was out. I think he had an injury or something. But so Masoli didn't get, really get to throw to him all that much. So he's still getting in the groove with guys like Tim White, Dunbar. And, uh, and yeah, so our offense is starting to gel, so it's exciting to see. Yeah, for sure. I know if they throw it up to any – any five guys at wide receiver or uh, whatever play Tommy draws up, I have 100% confidence in Jeremiah to get the get the job done. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. We we have to find a way to once we get in that inside the 20 to uh, make a play. I know against uh, Montreal they threw one up to me and I didn't make a play, so I lost sleep over that. But you know, we just got to figure out a way to start scoring points. We can't just move the ball all the way down the field. I mean, that's good, but we got to start putting sixes up on the board. That is Jalen Acklin as we caught up with him after practice. All right, lots of great stuff happening here on the uh, Tie Cats Audio Network. Brand new episode of Morielli and Hitch. Uh, and I haven't listened to it yet. I'm going to be honest. I haven't listened to it yet. I, I'm sure... It's gold, though. Uh, every episode those guys have put out have been absolutely hilarious. So a new episode of Morielli and Hitch is out. Uh, tomorrow there'll be a brand new episode of Task and Twos and Speaking with the Enemy. You got Ty Cats this week coming up with uh, Luke Tasker and RJ Broadhead. But every Monday you can catch the CFL This Week. It's a all-star panel discussion uh, coming out of the weekend of the biggest stories in the CFL. The host of that show 
is Bubba O'Neill, and I had a chance to catch up with him at practice today. Saw him at practice, thought, hey, you want to hop on the podcast with me? He said yes, and uh, here's our conversation, and it started off by uh, me asking him whether or not he thinks this is a must-win game for the Tiger Cats on Saturday. It's interesting that you use the word must-win, but it certainly must show up, right, and play four quarters. This is a really important game, I think, also to, to build back morale. I think you suffer the kind of defeats that they have right here in this building at Tim Hortons Field to the Alouettes and the Argonauts. And, you know, deflating for sure. But what I really liked is what Orlando Steiner, uh, Orlando Steiner or the head coach, said this week is that we were disappointed, but we're certainly not defeated or demoralized in that sense. So these guys know what is at stake. The last bye week has happened. It's time to put it together for gets the last five games of the regular season, and uh, let's see if everything gets it. Kind of lost a little bit of their control, but what they can do is win games. Uh, there was a great, great discussion on your show earlier this week about Dane Evans and Jeremiah Masoli, and I, I, I've always said that I get the sense that. If, if you watch the games and you pin the losses on Jeremiah Masoli, you probably already have an agenda. Yes, I understand the 0-4 record as a starter doesn't really hold up well, but what have you seen from Masoli, especially in the last two games that's helped him progress and, and gives you confidence that Jeremiah can still be the guy we saw in 2018 and the guy we saw in 2019 before he got hurt? Well, 2018 and 2019 was not a mirage. We know what this guy can do. Um, he displaced a very good quarterback in, in Zach Caleros and a very um, talented offensive mind in June Jones. Um, June Jones has been around for 100 years and knows good quarterbacks. So this is, this is no mirage. Hey, he hadn't played in, you know, you add in the COVID, you know, lost season. The guy hadn't played for almost two years. It was going to take time for him to settle in with an off with an offense that is slightly different than what he has last dealt with. But I think, you know, you complete 73% of your passes for 365 yards, throw two touchdowns, and make no interceptions in your last game. And you know, hey, this is a guy that can lead your team. What they have to do is be better inside the scoring or red zone. That, to me, has been an issue all season long, no matter the quarterbacks, right? All three quarterbacks have struggled to put this ball into the end zone. So, to me, I'm happy with Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I'm glad that this the head coach established in the first practice who his guy's going to be going forward. Let's see what Jeremiah can do. For the rest is up to him. And we're watching practice right now, and it's safe to say that red zone scoring is is a bit of a... A bit of a priority here at practice today, it, like you said. It, it, it it's kind of it's frustrating for them. It's frustrating for fans to watch, and I get it. But where where do the tight ads go from here now? Four and five. You, you mentioned it. They they've got their second bye week out of the way. Where where do you see them going? I see them going on a run. Yeah. What needs to happen though is some guys need to be healthy, and some guys got to show up. Brandon Banks has to become an integral part of this offense. Um, he is the one player, and there are many on this roster, but you go around and scout media, coaches, who fears? Who do they fear? Brandon Banks having a good game. And they got to get him involved early. Um, is he healthy? I don't know. If, I mean, we're seeing him. He's out there practicing. Um, maybe he's not 100%, but he's out here. And, and, and maybe another week you know, off last week and plus the – the uh, bye week will really, really help him because you. Anytime you get one of those core injuries, ribs, eh, you know, a little guy like him, he's going 155 pounds, right? That's tough. But he's got to become a, a real integral part of this uh, of this offense. The defense has been outstanding, in my opinion. Special teams been okay. Um, you know, we probably need a little bit better accuracy sometimes on some of those extra points and, and field goals, which could have been a difference in some of those games. But at the end of the day, this is an offensive-minded league, even though scoring is down. And I think Jeremiah has to source the players that can get him chunk yardage and not bit yardage. Uh, to the point of Brandon Banks, we've seen him uh, return some kicks here at practice this week. Do you, do you like that in the sense of... Get him going however you can, whether it is using him in the running game, whether it is using screen passes or you know maybe big plays early. The importance of getting Brandon Banks involved in the game early, especially, you know, because he is the reigning MOP. He is used to putting up big yards. It, it seems like 
that should kind of be a goal as Ty Cats team is to try and get Brandon involved and get him to stay involved in the game. And that's a great point that you you make there is is getting him involved on what he does best, and that is kick returns, punt returns, um, getting the ball into his hands offensively. Maybe you want to short little dump off passes and let his speed do the work for him. But you're right. I think that gets him mentally into the game too because the bigger time, the more he can contribute, he's a guy that wants to win. There's no guy. I, I will say this in my opinion. I don't know if there's a guy that on this field that we're looking at, probably about 60 fellas, that wants to win more than Brandon Banks. Right? You see it in his face every single time, but he loves to contribute. He loves to to be a part of the victory so whatever it takes whatever it is in terms of kick returns um, there are a few guys that can contribute offensively and on special teams without being tired or avoiding injuries like this guy so again to what your to your point there getting him going on offense and special teams will be I think and as I said earlier it's it's an important key he is we got Addison we got so many talented guys on this team but boy, when Brandon's going good, I don't know if there's anyone better. And big news this week from the CFL, big news from the Thai Cats for the city of Hamilton, last week I should say. Uh, but the 2023 Grey Cup getting to be held here. We've heard, we've heard it, you know, getting the chance to host the Grey Cup they deserve, the Grey Cup they plan. But more than that, for the city of Hamilton, getting to host this event two times in three years after not hosting it for 25 years, it just seems like a huge moment for everybody. Well, you think of all the planning that went into the bidding process from a couple of weeks ago to get this game played here. And there was a year they didn't get it, and Saskatchewan was able to uh, be awarded the game. They have put put together some intricate plans to remodel the stadium. Um, This has become kind of a music capital of of Canada all of a sudden. So people want to be involved with this in terms of... That's an important part of the show is, is the music and the entertainment. And we know, we know what the fan base in this area, how much they love the Canadian Football League. So I'm sure the Tiger Cats put together an outstanding, spectacular plan. Some of it was revealed to the public. And to be have COVID shut it down, basically, and kind of limit it to a special home game like we're seeing here for 2021. I think it was only right for the Canadian Football League to say, let's give these guys the the mantle one more time as soon as we can so they can really show the full mantra of exactly what they had plans. And I'm sure uh, Commissioner Randy Ambrosi knows exactly what was planned. You look at some of those diagrams, uh, Louis, like, I mean, of what they have planned. Get me there. Right. Get me there. Why wouldn't you want to be in this in this stadium for, you know, for not only just a game, but all the events and stuff that's going to be going on all week. So I, I thought it was I'm not I, I'm happy, but I also thought it was just you. Right. <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm excited to see you know, what Hamilton looks like in 2023, right? I mean, we've seen Hamilton, and it's, it's spoken a lot, you know, the, re, the renaissance, the resurgence of what Hamilton is. But to see where this city could be in, in two years, especially with all the excitement happening downtown, and it's, it's going to be fun. Well, I think the, the, the key word for me is pride. Uh, I, I don't know if people had pride in this city, um, or at least a, enough people had pride in this city. Um, for a long, long time, but that's really changed, and um, we're seeing a new generation of young people coming into the city that have changed it to uh, the bars, the downtown life, the amount of condos that are being built. I'm interested in all, of course, I'm interested in all these restaurants that are popping up, right? I know the commissioner talked about it, but he's true. It's true. Like, it's amazing. You're talking about all these Toronto famous cooks and chefs that are opening up facilities and restaurants here in this city. And and that's just part of the show, right? Yeah. I mean, entertainment is part of what we do here in, in, in terms of the Grey Cup game and having people show up and enjoy the, 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 the city. You, you know, you've been around to some of the Grey Cup. I was lucky to go to Calgary. And it's it's a week of metamorphosis. The, the city almost shuts down to host the nation and what is the greatest single-day sporting event in the country? Well said. Thanks for doing this, Bubs. Always a pleasure, Louie. Thanks for having me. That is Bubba O'Neill, my friend. Uh, you can catch him on CHCH, and you can also catch him right here on the Ticats Audio Network every Monday, hosting the uh, the CFL this week. Make sure to subscribe to the Ticats Audio Network wherever you get your favorite podcast, so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows uh, we can we've been putting out for you. 
All right, thanks so much for uh, joining me. Thanks to Bubba O'Neill for joining me today as well. We are back tomorrow, same time, same place. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. Uh, for the Tie Cats Audio Network, I'm Louis B. Hope you have a great day. Tie Cats today with Louis B. Subscribe, like, and get your Tie Cats fix every weekday.